Good morning. Thanks again for waking up early to uh, attend this conference. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present some of our uh, most recent data on nitric oxide affecting mitochondrial function. So I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes looking at uh, first some clinical observations on exercise performance, uh, go through the literature, a brief review on the function of mitochondria, why this is an important site of regulation, not only for exercise performance, but modulating the ischemia reperfusion injury in at-risk patients. Uh, I'll briefly go over what nitric oxide is, and then I'll end with strategies, simple lifestyle, diet and lifestyle strategies that have been shown to be proven to be effective at nitric oxide uh, uh, restoration. And in the interest of full disclosure, I should say that I'm the founder and chief science officer of Neogenesis Labs. So we've all seen this guy, and in fact, this was the first commercial use of nitric oxide back in the late 90s after the Nobel Prize was awarded. And so I think this type of strategy actually trivialized the importance, the physiological importance of nitric oxide. And that's illustrated best here by showing that in young, well-trained athletes, your ability to generate nitric oxide through the nitric oxide synthase enzyme, which converts L-arginine into nitric oxide, is basically very effective. And this is basically a reflection of endothelial function. The problem with, in the, in the older population, in patients with endothelial dysfunction, their inability to generate nitric oxide upon beginning of exercise is compromised. And in fact, their inability to generate nitric oxide is what causes these people to not be able to uh, begin an exercise regimen. So going back and using this approach of giving L-arginine uh, when there's underlying endothelial dysfunction is largely ineffective. And so we've been trying to figure out how do we overcome endothelial dysfunction and how do we give the body an, an alternative source of nitric oxide when there's the inability to generate NO from the L-arginine pathway. And after the 2012 games last year in London, it was revealed that a lot of the Olympic athletes were beating before the Olympic games. And in, in fact, the entire UK uh, Olympic team uh, harnessed this uh, technology or this approach, and they won more medals than any time previously in history. And so what they were doing is drinking beetroot juice, which is a source of inorganic nitrate, and then I'll, go, I'll, take you, I'll take you through the mechanism, but basically this is a way that the body can generate nitric oxide from dietary sources. And this is just a review of the data. You can see that uh, uh, at least a dozen studies now have shown that if you take uh, a nitrate source, such as beet juice, even acutely a single dose before an exercise event, or if you take this several days leading up, you can see a statistically significant improvement in exercise performance. Now, most of, the, most of these studies were done in young, healthy athletes, and you can see if they're looking at time trials or knee extension exercise, either aerobic or uh, resistance exercise, you see an improvement. And even the, the most recent study looking at older patients in, with peripheral artery disease, you see a single dose basically improved their walking distance and prevented this intermittent claudication that PAD uh, patients suffer from. And then this is a study I took from probably one of the most comprehensive studies uh, published in Cell Metabolism, looking at if they gave dietary nitrate to these well-trained athletes, it basically reduced whole body oxygen consumption. And so it looked like from the data that this was occurring at the level of the mitochondria. And so then the question is, what's the biochemical link and the mechanism of action between nitric oxide, dietary nitrite, and enhanced performance? And of course, you know the answer. It occurs at the level of the mitochondria. And so I'll just briefly review this because I'm assuming that most people know that the mitochondria are the cellular power plants that generate uh, cellular ATP, uh, which is the energy source for all metabolic activities. And the number of mitochondria that are found in cells differ from cell type to cell type. And you can actually induce more uh, biogenesis of mitochondria. And so what I'm going to take you through in the next couple of minutes is really the, the effect of nitric oxide regulating not only mitochondrial biogenesis, but at the uh, subcellular level of uh, regulation of ATP production, not only in normoxic conditions, but also under hypoxic conditions that occurs during strenuous exercise or what occurs during an ischemic event such as a heart attack or stroke. And a lot of this occurs at the electron transport chain, which is this, uh, this flow of electrons through this intermembrane space that creates this electrochemical gradient and then uh, substrates from the TCA cycle can enter this complex one or complex three, generate ATP, and <clears throat> basically this is the sole source of energy uh, in most cells using the TCA cycle. 
So we now.